was something not quite right because she dropped the grandchild off and not come back for three weeks at a time at one time she dropped off with one shoe on her foot and ran from the door and then I get a phone call one day saying um, could I pick up my grandchild from the police station so I went to the police station my daughter had been arrested and I didn't know what for at the time they went to the court the next day and they went remanded into custody and all I knew was they was taking my daughter to prison there are families that become hardened to it, they get used to the system, they know exactly the steps that the court system takes. I didn't know. I thought she's gone to prison. When are they going to tell me when she's coming out? I didn't understand that she had to be sentenced and all that, and it takes a process. And First of all, I sat in the court and I was just like totally confused. Where do, what do I do? So then I came out of the court and the court building was practically empty. It was the end of the day. And I just sat on this bench and sobbed my heart out. And I didn't know what to do, where she'd been taken or anything. And one of the guards came up to me, and uh, security guards, and said, are you okay? And I said, they've taken my daughter, they've taken her to prison, I don't know where they've taken her. So, She'll be in Holloway, love. If you phone this number, you'll be able to book a visit to go and see her. The first visit I went up to see her, there was protesters outside because this woman's daughter had died in the prison. And she's protesting outside about the number of deaths in women's prisons. Straight away, that's it, my daughter's gonna die in here. You just imagine the worst. And it was just pure worry throughout. I, I sat and I watched the window by my front door and just waited for her to come through the door and she didn't. I was phoning Samaritans, I was phoning all sorts of people. Who do I turn to? I mean, it was only in the court that day that I found out that my daughter was actually a crack user. I got a double smack in the face that day. I got, she's gone to prison and she's a drug addict and I've got to take on the grandchild. And you feel, where did I go wrong? What did I do wrong? You know, I wouldn't go to bed at night because my daughter was in a cell and I imagined her sitting in this cell with rats and whatever else and the worst possible scenario was going through my head. And I used to feel guilty for going to bed. But then I started to realise this can happen to anyone. This could happen to you. This could happen to your granddaughter or your daughter or your son. Your whole world collapses when something happens to your child and you can't save them. My brother, he's quite shy and quiet, like me. But when he's when he's happy, he speaks a lot and he smiles and everything. When he went into jail, we wasn't a proper family because it was just all quiet. And when he's with us, he makes us have a smile on our face. And when he went into jail, it felt like I didn't have a brother and it felt like I was just all alone. My mum was a bit stressed out and upset and she kept on crying. Me and my sister would just go in our room and think it was the end of the world and we're the only one that has this problem. She did sometimes cry on my shoulder and I sometimes cried on her shoulder even though I was bigger than her. And then my brother started 
sending us cards and ringing us, which was good. My mum sent him money every week, and my mum was thinking of him, but we visited him like every month because it's a long way. It's quite expensive for my mum travelling because he went to Portsmouth and it was nice there and we went on the beach there, had chips, but then we had to go to the jail where it was. It was a bit strange because I thought someone's gonna shout at me because the police officers all look strict and sometimes there was a dog and sometimes there wasn't I had to check if you had anything and once they checked me and I had because in Portsmouth there was pebbles and I like pebbles and stones because all of them were different colours so and I took some pebbles in my pockets they smiled and just said oh nice pebbles but I wasn't in trouble because there were only pebbles <laughs> I didn't have enough time. I didn't have much time with him to speak and say what's going on at school and everything. Because they kept on saying five minutes or ten minutes left and it was just very upsetting because missing someone, it feels like it's a broken piece. You just feel hurt inside. I did tell only two of my friends because they they understand what's going on because one of my friends, she's like a nice friend because her brother went to jail as well. So it was nice to hear that I wasn't the only one. So I spoke to her about it and she was telling me what it felt like as well. But then she wouldn't tell nobody because in her family she has difficulties as well. But everyone has problems, even the Queen. Thank you.